I just hacked Red Bull and as a thank you and as a part of the bug bounty program, they sent me a bunch of these for reporting what they call an exceptional vulnerability. And in this video, I want to bring back the bug bounty series and tell you exactly how I did it step by step. But before we do this, you got to do me a favor. You got to drop me a comment and tell me what kind of content do you want to see in the future. And also, if you haven't already, you got to hit that subscribe button turn on the notification bell so you are the first to get notified when I drop a brand new video every Monday. Let's jump into the video. As always, you can go on to hackinghub.io. You can click on the lab. I'll link it down below. You can launch this lab and follow along. Or if you don't want to, you want to do it later, kick back and let me show you my magic. Before we talk about how I hack Red Bull, there's a few things that we need to understand. One is we need to understand how Tomcat works and what is Tomcat, how to hack into it, and two, how does a reverse proxy work? If you understand the two of those and you bring them together, I promise you there will be plenty of vulnerabilities or leads that you can generate for yourself moving forward. And to be honest, this is not a brand new research. This is not something that I have researched and found on my own. This is a part of a research done by Orange Side. You can go watch it, I think from DEF CON 28 or 26, one of those two, you can look it up. He has done some amazing research on this. I will also link it down below so you can go check it out. But I want to make sure you understand this is not something I have done. It's a big part of his research and it's still valid to this day. All right, let's jump into it. So this is what you would see once you launch your hacking hub instance, it will bring you to this website. First, we need to understand how Tomcat works. For Tomcat specifically, Tomcat allows you to launch Java application on Apache and most of these APIs that you see somehow either gets reverse proxy to a Tomcat or they are sitting on a Tomcat instance. You can see that by going to the main page of the website. A lot of times you will see it say an Apache Tomcat version, a similar page to this. And sometimes you, you may see something completely different and you can see it's running on Tomcat by giving it an invalid path. And then it would give you this banner right here. This blue banner sometimes may not have the Apache Tomcat version at the bottom, but seeing this error message usually indicates that they are on some version of Tomcat and running it on their web server. So the first thing that you can do in a lot of cases is even if you don't see the server status or manage app link, you can always directly query for it, or you can use something like FFUF or WFUS or whatever tools you use to look for whether or not manager slash HTML is available. Unfortunately, nowadays it's very less common for you to have access to the Tomcat manager. A lot of times it is locked down. You will see a 403. You can bypass that and we'll talk about that in a little bit, but also sometimes the password isn't easily guessable. But to be honest, to this day, there has been plenty of times on a pen test or a bug bounty program that I do find a guessable password. And it's super easy to do this. You can usually do this with something like Burb Suit or any of these brute forcing tools. And you can type in usernames like Tomcat, Tomcat UI. And actually, if you give it a wrong password, it will tell you sometimes the username for it is Tomcat, Tomcat UI, Tom Manager GUI. You can see they give you some sort of an information for it. And a lot of times the password is their secret Tomcat password, or I've honestly seen sometimes that the password was empty and the username Tomcat with a blank password, unfortunately worked. So those are your options when it comes down to looking at a vanilla, just Tomcat instance that you have found on recon, or you just came across this bug bounty program. And it's super easy to exploit once you get in. For the sake of this video, I'm gonna let you figure out how to brute force the credentials. It's super easy. It's not something hard to do, but I kinda wanna just quickly go through this one step so we can get to the exploitation with Red Bull. For this one, we're gonna assume that we've already gotten the password. I'm gonna go through it. And once you log in, this is what Tomcat looks like. Typically, this is what you get. And getting to here is usually a really, really good spot to stop. A lot of companies would appreciate if you stop. But let's say you are on a pen test, you're on, on a red team engagement, and they tell you, hey, you want to get a shell or whatever it is, you're doing a CTF and you need to get a shell immediately. This is how you do it. Actually, Hacktrick has a really, really good resource on this. They walk you through a bunch of different scenarios and how you can exploit it. But honestly, the one thing you want is a .war file, which is a compressed file of your JSP or your shell that you have. And you can find a bunch of those on GitHub. But for example, in this one, they have an index.jsp. This is the contents of it. You can see it takes a parameter command and it runs and executes that command on that machine. So you can make that on your own and then you can go down here, you select your file and you deploy it. And once you deploy, you can see right here that there is a brand new path that we have added as a list of, to the list of our applications within Tomcat. And if we click on it, it's gonna bring us to the CMD folder. And within that war file that I've created, you can see right here, this is literally the file that I've put into the CMD war. So once it unpacks this, it's gonna create this folder with CMD and CMD.jsp is going to be 
within that folder. And here we can actually run a command like ID and it's going to give us the results of it. And bam, we have our command injection. Super easy, much less common nowadays to find this. But again, don't give up when you see a Tomcat instance, see if you can guess the password. Maybe you can find it leaked somewhere. Try anything you can. But there's also other ways to get to this, which we'll talk about in just a bit. But I wanted to make sure we cover this before we jump into the second part of this video. Before we do that, though, quickly take a break. I know what you're going to think about, but Naham, what if I can't see manager? What if there is a Tomcat version and I can't hit it? How does that work? How does it? I'm confused. How do these things work? Well, let me show you. This is another example. And this is probably the most common thing you will see because a lot of times people would put their Tomcat servers behind a reverse proxy. So the way it works here is, for example, anytime you open some sort of a resource, for example, in this case, if you open a image file right here, and if you give it an invalid path, it's going to immediately come back and say, hey, Nginx is not finding that file you want, but obviously this file that we want, this image.png is available to us and we can load it. But what if we find another path? Let's say you brute force for it and you actually find an application where it has some sort of a non-static file like a login or some sort of an admin function and you come here and, but maybe in the backend it is a JSP file, it's a Java file, who knows, but somehow it is connected to Tomcat. And we can test that theory sometimes by also giving it an invalid path. And you can see in this case, when I put my invalid path after staff, it is showing me the Apache Tomcat error instead of the original error where it was just the Nginx. This is where you have to start thinking of reverse proxies and where these proxies are sending your request based on what you are querying for. So again, for this case specifically, anytime I do something around staff, it is going to give us the Tomcat error because it is going through Tomcat versus the static files and all the other index files that were the static page for the marketing side, for example, is running on Nginx. But if you go here and type in staff manager HTML, unfortunately that is not going to work. Let me fix that. That is not going to work because the manager HTML file is always, always, always in the web root, but we don't have access to the web root of this Tomcat instance because again, it is going through Nginx. This is where the research by Orin Sa comes in handy. And this is when you have to understand how path traversers work is by typing in staff traversing out of it. You can see that it's going back, showing the content of the Nginx. So we're traversing out of it. The web server is still looking at the staff and the web root folder. But now if we convert that slash into a semicolon, the entire thing is going to be looked at differently. It's going to confuse a reverse proxy and show us the Tomcat web root versus the website's web root on Nginx. So think of these when you look at them, if you see some differences in paths, when one path is showing you, for example, Tomcat and the other one is showing you Nginx, you always want to think about these different places that you can put your path traversal for it to work. And again, I want to make sure you understand in order for this to work, you have to have a valid path that is already serving you content through Tomcat. So for this example, staff is the place that we got it. It could sometimes be API. It could be API V1. It could be a number of different places, but you have to brute force for that valid path that is being reverse proxied through Tomcat before you can do a path traversal. Now let's talk about how do you exploit this? Obviously you can probably guess it that going to the manager app isn't going to work. And we can also actually do that by doing this this time. It's gonna come up. The password for this isn't going to be easily guessable. Maybe you can find it, but the point of this is to exploit it a different way, which I'm gonna show you how to do with Red Bull as well. I came across this website that said corporationhandbook.redbull.com. It sent me to another path and it hit me with this login page. At the moment, I didn't realize this was a Tomcat instance and I was doing brute forcing. And when I hit API slash API docs, it popped up with a password. But then when I canceled out of the password, what I realized it was the 401 unauthorized, but the Tomcat version with the purple banner at the top that showed me, hey, you are not authorized to see this page. And guess what? When I see something like that my first instance is always a reverse proxy and seeing if I can get out of this. What if I can actually access the web root of this Tomcat instance and see what's behind? And as you can see, when I hit the web root here, it shows me the login. But when I do the dot dot semicolon slash, it is showing me a completely different page, kind of indicating that there may be something more here. And you can actually use this trick further to find 
extra content through the reverse proxy versus what you would do normally by just giving it the slash. So in this case, I'm giving it dot dot semicolon slash fuzz. So in this case, I'm giving it web jars slash dot dot semicolon slash because web jars is also a folder that was being served through Tomcat. And then I'm waiting for it to come back with some content that I originally did not find. Once I let that finish, I came across this path Jolokia and Jolokia is very well known to be vulnerable in a lot of different ways. A lot of times it allows you to get a part of the memory to get a heap dump that could potentially have information. I did something similar to this with Corbin. I'll link it down below, go check it out. I don't want to cover that again. But the thing that stood out the most here is I couldn't get access to the heap dump. I didn't have access to a lot of different things, but knowing Jolokia is vulnerable to a lot of different exploits, what I could do was look up one of these exploitation toolkits, open it up and look at the number of different exploits that are available to me, and then use one of them to escalate my access from a path traversal to getting access to Tomcat. And if you're not sure, how to do this. This comes with a lot of experience, but I've done this before. I know that I can easily do a local file read using Jolokia. And you can see right here, I'm copying the payload for it. Using this exploit, I'm able to read ETC host just to confirm at first that I do have access to read local files. And once that is confirmed, then we are able to escalate this with Tomcat. So right here, you can see that it opens up the file. It shows us the ETC host file. It is confirmed to be vulnerable. But now we have to think about the different ways to exploit this. And it all goes back to Tomcat itself. So now that I've kind of shown you my thought process with Red Bull, let me show you exactly how to exploit this because unfortunately I can't share the Red Bull parts of this with you because it has some sensitive data in it. But honestly, the exploit is the same and you can follow along. But all you have to do is one, we can see Jolokia here. And then the next thing we can do is we're going to hit the same path. We're going to use this diagnostics command and have this directive give us the ETC password. And you can see it works on this test environment. But the next thing you want to do is you want to think about sensitive configuration files. And honestly, sometimes this might be different. It took me a while to find one of these, but the one that I'm specifically looking for is in user. And also you have to escape every slash with an exclamation point. So we're going to do local Tomcat users dot XML. And this is when you can file a configuration for Tomcat to get access to all the different users. Like for example, here we have the manager GUI, we have Tomcat all these different users that you can get access to and abuse this functionality to log in to manager slash HTML, which as you can see, this password would probably not been guessable, but guess what? Now we have our entire access. We can actually get into this Tomcat instance and deploy our very own shell and escalate our access. This is exactly how I hacked Red Bull. And this was a pretty good trick to connect the dots and realize that just doing a path traversal could get me access to something completely different, get me to Jolokia, exploit a local file read with Jolokia, get access to Tomcat, and then file it and let them know that I could probably exploit this further if they wanted me to, which they told me to stand down and leave it alone. So now you can also try it, go to Hacking Hub. The link is down below. You can do this exact same lab, but just going through it and trying it out and putting it into your methodology in case you run into something similar in the future. All right, that's it. Let me know. What do you think? Do you like content like this? Do you want to see more of these? What did you think of this one? Have you done it before yourself? I want to hear from you. Drop me a comment, like this video, and I will see you all in the next video. Peace. And we're going to type in our password. I'm going to let you figure out what that is. Uh, wait, hold on. What is the password for it? Password username is Tomcat. Oh.